Well, greetings. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about my website, The Health Page, uh, which is about six weeks old now, maybe a little bit more, uh, which has had, I'm very happy to say, more than uh, 60,000 views. And I'd like to put on record uh, my thank you to all the immunologists, virologists, GPs, medics, surgeons, dietitians, and all the people that have contributed their expertise to that page. I do thank you very sincerely. Uh, and without that, it couldn't have happened. Uh, my background is life assurance and pensions. Uh, I was a chief executive of a life assurance company for many years. And I also know about things like mortality statistics uh, and, and health and so on and so forth. Well, I would, wouldn't I? That's my field. But my job is to collate information. Uh, it's not to tell you what you should do or what you shouldn't do. That's not my job at all. My job is to give you information, uh, uh, independent information from global sources, from the top people, so you can make your own assessment. And I've said this on videos many times, for you to make your own assessment. And that's very, very important. It should be under the charter of the BBC, of course, their duty to inform you. That's what you pay your money for. And if, of course, if you don't pay your money, you go to prison. You pay your money to be informed and they don't inform you. All BBC do is give you, and mainstream media, is give you the government line. They give you the establishment line. No dissent is allowed. No challenge is allowed. Uh, and that's why I've put together uh, this page on my website, which is becoming so successful. Now, a word to the fact checkers, the little fact checker people who sometimes involve themselves in my work. Uh, what you've got to understand uh, is, and I know that you're probably very young, probably on the minimum wage, probably don't know much about the interpretation of data statistics or uh, indeed anything else. You probably imagine you work for an independent organisation, which of course you don't. It has, an, it has a political agenda. And if you audit trail your way up to the top of your fact finding organisation, you'll find uh, that uh, you'll bump into the usual uh, establishment names. But leaving that aside, let me make this very clear to you now. An alternative medical scientific hypothesis is not a false fact, all right? It's a difference of opinion. It's a medical difference of opinion, which has been happened since, you know, the beginning of the medical profession started hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, all right? It's a different opinion. It doesn't make it wrong, uh, it probably makes it even more right because it's independent. Uh, and that's the point. So don't, don't involve yourself in my work uh, if you don't really know what you're doing. Now, what I want to talk to you now about is something that has really been left behind in the last year, and that is your natural immune system. Your immune system is your number one resource for resisting viruses, bugs, and so on and so forth of any kind. It's your own system. It's a very complicated thing, your body. It's also a very clever thing. It's an extremely clever and sophisticated thing. And the reason that we are all here on this planet after uh, tens of thousands of years as humankind is because our bodies are geared to resist bugs and viruses, so on and so forth. Now we get some bad ones. We've had some, we've had the Antonine Plague, we've had the Black Plague, we had that twice, Middle Ages uh, and uh, in the 1600s. Uh, we've had smallpox, which took a bit of beating. And it was medical science, uh, certainly, that beat a lot of these things and well done. And I'm not anti-medicine, uh, uh, I'm not anti-vax or anything like that. I've had the lot, I'm a baby boomer, I've been jabbed for polio, jabbed for this, jabbed for that, hepatitis B when I go abroad uh, to some dodgy places. Um, and I have all that, so I know they do well, and I know they've made a wonderful effort in order to uh, help uh, survival, and particularly survival in children. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So yes, medication can work. But we live in a society now where the first thing they do is if there's any hint of any medical problem is to try and give you drugs for it. And well, that's, that's not necessarily a good idea. Your immune, your immune system is your first port of call. And of course, as you get older, your immune system doesn't function quite as well as it used to. How could it? If you had a 71, I'm 71, if you had a 71 year old car, you wouldn't expect it to perform as well as a brand new car. So you have to be that little bit more careful. And your immune system is dependent on a number of things. It's your overall health. Uh, it's your overall health, so you need to try and keep fit. And you have to make sure you have the right number of vitamins in the system, if you will. Uh, if it was a car, the right kind of oil and the right kind of petrol, so on and so forth. That is what you need. 
uh, and you need your vitamin D, your vitamin C, your vitamin B1, your zinc, so on. You need all these things. And I've gone into this before. I've gone into this before in my videos. Uh, you need all these things uh, to top up and you need to stay uh, fit, as fit as you can for your age. And you will shake off these bugs and there's no need for medication unless you are facing a specific reason. There's a specific reason for medication and that is that you're facing a killer bug. And of course smallpox was a killer bug and uh, polio was a wicked bug for young people. It left them maimed for life. It was appalling. Uh, and TB, the idea of the TB uh, jab over the years, of course, has saved countless of lives in the Western democracies. All these things are good things. Uh, but we are going overboard at the moment. We're going completely overboard and it's not helping uh, this mass medication for those people who don't need it. What you need to do uh, is buck up your immune system, give your immune system every chance and that'll serve you well for this virus uh, that's going around at the moment where there is already a 99% recovery. And the reason there's a 99% recovery rate on it uh, plus, if, 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 if you're under 70 and you're physically fit, uh, is because of your immu immune system. So have a little think. Why, why do you need medication when it's something that you're going to get better from anyway? It isn't smallpox, it isn't Ebola, it isn't anything like that. Uh, it's not going to kill you unless you are already very frail or, or very ill or very, very old. It's not going to kill you, all right? Uh, so think twice about your medication. Let me give you a little anecdote on this one, uh, although it's not to do with viruses. Five or six years ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes 2. Diabetes 2. And of course, the first thing that they said was, oh, have some pills. Have some pills. We've got your pills. You met morphine and all that kind of thing. Jolly good. And I had that for four years. Uh, and I met a medic, a uh, lady medic, friend of the family. She said, do you know that you can actually get rid of that with a little bit of effort? And I said, oh, that's interesting. How can I do that? And she said, well, let me give you a little tip. Give up bread. I said, really? I thought you had to give up chocolates and sweeties and stuff like that. She said, no, no, just give up bread and see how it goes for six weeks. I gave up bread for six weeks, which was a tough call because we've got a very good baker in town and I'm very fond of their, their bread. Their new baked bread is very nice. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, she said also, can you, do you think you could get to walk 35 miles a day? Now, I've always been reasonably fit for my age, reasonably fit. I go full walking and all the rest of it. I said, yes, okay, I can do that. And she said, well, try and do that. 35 miles a week, if you can, with the dogs. And I live in a rural, uh, a rural part of Yorkshire, so I can do that. Uh, and that hasn't been a problem. So I did that. Now, I lost a stone and I wasn't overweight particularly, bit of corporation. Yeah, as you get older, bit of, especially if you're a boozer. And I'm a boozer. Um, so I got rid of that stone. I went back for my blood test, all right? No diabetes, it had gone. Now this is a trip to what your body can do if you give it a chance, give it an even break. Uh, so if you make a little bit of effort, a little bit of research, you can sort yourself out. It's not a question of medication all the time. Uh, and I also cycle into town. She said, can you cycle into town? It's five miles. Well, I do that anyway in the summer, fair weather cyclist. It's uh, five miles away, so that's a 10 miles round cycle, probably every other day, certainly. Uh, and bear in mind, all you need is a push bike. You don't need Lycra for top to bottom and a silly hat and a camera and wheeze and spit your way around the, uh, the road. You, you get an ordinary push bike and use that if, if it's sunny when you're going into town, if you can, if you're fortunate enough to live uh, in a suitable area, and I am. Now, I'm moving on now to children. There's, it seems to be now that there's a, a movement to vaccinate Children, this is frankly an appalling idea. No child, and I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, I've said it before in video, no healthy child in Europe has died of this current virus. Not a single one. Not a single one. So why would we consider, and if you say, ah, yes, I know, but it will give them, it, it will help them, that won't spread it to the older people in their family. Well, the older people in their family are very likely to have a 99% recovery rate in any event, in any event, 99%. So we look at what the uh, manufacturers say, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Modena, Pfizer, all these people say, they actually say, they've been quite honest, it doesn't stop um, you spreading uh, coronavirus. It, it doesn't stop it. Uh, it. All this jab is supposed to do is if you get a dose, it won't be hopefully as bad as the other. Now, 
uh, you might say, well, what are the long-term effects, not the short-term effects? And I'll say this again as well. I'm not talking about a rash or a bump or feeling lousy for a week, so on and so forth. That has been part and parcel of having all sorts of jabs all sorts of time. And I've had loads. You know, I've had diphtheria, I've had polio, I've had hepatitis B traveling all over the world. I'm not anti-vax or anything silly like that. I've, I've had them and jolly good luck to them too. And they're jolly good. This though is something different. This is different. This is a new guy on the block. Now we don't know uh, what the effects will be down the road because there hasn't been time to test it. It hasn't been around long enough. Now that's not a criticism. That's not a criticism of anybody at all. What I'm saying is it hasn't been around long enough for, we, for us to know what the long term, and when I say long term, three, four, five, six year term effect might be. So there is an element of chance. And again, Big Pharma have been totally honest about that. They say we don't know down the track two, three, four years, whether it's fertility, whatever it happens to be, which is why we can't legally indemnify you. They can't legally indemnify you because they don't know. And they're honest. They're saying that they don't know. So if you have children, if you have children, have a little thought, have a little thought and say, just a minute, Big Pharma is saying they don't know. They can't indemnify us. No children are dying from this virus. Why would I give them the jab? Is it because I'm so bloody selfish it might stop me getting it from my kids when they get back from school? Is that what it's all about? I hope it isn't. So I would counsel you to have a very big think about it. Go to my website. There's nearly half a million words on the website there. It's all there. Dietitians, immunization, the whole thing is there. Make an effort to do your homework to make the best decision for you and your family. Don't be bone idle and lazy. Your family depend upon it. Uh, as most of you know, my work is very heavily independently research based uh, and I get my information from all over the world. It would help if you press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it because the more subscribers I have, uh, the more likely it is that international uh, independent research institutes will share their material with me. It's most helpful and then of course I'll automatically share it with you. Uh, so, surprise, won't cost you anything. Uh, thank you very much.